thank you jaydeep uh, we have been listening to very interesting uh, uh, discourse uh, now my turn is about uh, latent autoimmune diabetes in adults uh so to introduce the topic this is a type of diabetes occurring in adults with slowly progressive beta cell loss due to autoimmunity so if you see ada they classify lada as type 1 diabetes but there is also very much overlap between type 1 and type 2 as we'll see in the next few slides and there is a suggested criteria to diagnose this uh, type of diabetes that patient uh, should uh, have age of onset of diabetes of more than 30 years there should be presence of any islet cell antibody now they do not specify which antibody and they also do not specify any titer which should be diagnostic for making the diagnosis and there should be absence of insulin requirement for at least 6 months after the diagnosis is made now with these criteria we can remember that we we may be seeing patients we are, but uh, we will we will we will we'll miss we, we have missed the diagnosis now regarding the age of onset uh, what is uh, written here is 30 years uh, and it's also quoted in uh, ada classification but uh, this one uh, immunology of uh, diabetes uh, society which says that it should be 35 and there is also an entity known as ladi that is uh, latent autoimmune diabetes in young where almost similar presentation was seen in adolescent also where uh, patient uh, had uh, diabetes uh, which was uh, sometimes uh, started with dk and patients came in in a very long honeymoon period and they were having antibodies positive so we can say but the only thing uh, which is very uh, correct is that uh, chances of lada starting after the age of 50 years is very very rare now if you see the prevalence 3 to 12% of people diagnosed with type 2 diabetes may have lada when screened with uh, particularly gad antibodies and nearly 30% patients uh, uh, with type 1 diabetes start their disease when they are about 30 years and uh, though the lada patients uh, show features of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes they are phenotypically more closer to type 1 diabetes now coming to epidemiology i have just compiled uh, one of the uh, slides from one of the review articles if you can see in uk pds uh, they did uh, gad antibodies or uh, islet cell antibodies in a in a in a, a number of patients and then they found that uh, those patients who were initially diagnosed as type 2 diabetes actually 12% of them had gad antibodies or so this uh, ica antibodies positive then you come to finland there again a big registry over there and we would remember that uh, finland is a country where there is a highest incidence of uh, type 1 diabetes and again their incidence uh, of positivity for and uh, beta cell antibodies was found 9.3% then there is a big study action lada study which was done in many countries in europe and a large cohort of 6810 patients were included uh, age uh, range was between uh, 30 you can see most of them are about 30 and uh, gad antibody positive or any other antibody positivity was seen in 9.7% and there are some studies from uh, china and korea where lesser number of patients uh, had positivity Uh, in adopt trial again they wanted to exclusively have type uh, two patients and so they did uh, uh, gad antibodies uh, in most patients who were uh, included in the trial and it was found that 4.2% of the patients had gad antibody positivity and they ultimately excluded those patients from the study now coming to pathogenesis uh, we should know that uh, antibodies are trying to uh, knock down beta cells and in the usual uh, common garden type 1 diabetes they very soon knock down the beta cells and the patient becomes insulin dependent but in lada the antibodies are uh, fighting against beta cells and the beta cells are putting up a brave uh, sort of a fight and so they take a longer time to completely knock down by the antibodies and uh, metabolic syndrome features are seen in subset of lada patients uh, with lower titers of antibodies and higher bmi assessment of omir has shown that patients with lada have insulin resistance 
even after correction with BMI. So you can say that some features of insulin resistance or type two like presentation are there. Autoimmune processes seem to be milder and progression to beta cell failure is slower. Now, in action LADA European uh, multicentric uh, trial, 90% patients uh, who were diagnosed with LADA actually had GAD, GAD antibodies and very few patients have uh, the other antibodies like ILX antibody, insuluma, and insulinoma associated 2A or zinc transporter antibodies were seen in just 10% cases. So we can say that the GAD antibodies are the most sensitive sort of antibodies when we are uh, looking for LADA. Now, LADA patients consistently display higher levels of C-peptide than type 1 diabetes. So at the time of diagnosis, if you see, uh, and uh, particularly if you see the stimulated C-peptide, the, this C-peptide definitely shows that they have a better beta cell reserve as compared to the patients with the uh, adolescent onset type 1 diabetes. In UKPDS, among the patients diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, 84% of those who were GAD positive progresses to insulin dependence in six years as compared to just 14% patients who were GAD and negative. So this means that positivity of GAD seen in type 2 patients is more or less suggesting that these patients have uh, autoimmune destruction of beta cells. Now this uh, slide shows you that uh, in classical cases of uh, type 1 diabetes with adolescent onset or childhood onset, if you do stimulated C-peptide and the classical test recommended is 90 minutes after a mixed meal, you can see that uh, very few patients have, uh, uh, if you have a cutoff of say 0.7, which turns out to be, this is nanomole. You, if you convert it into nanogram, which is more prevalent in India, nanogram per ml, it will come around 0.7. So very, very few patients after having it's been stimulated with mixed meals have sufficient or substantial C-peptide. And this falls very rapidly over the course of years. But when it comes to LADA, many patients have a substantial uh, uh, stimulated C-peptide showing that they have much better beta cell reserve. And you can also see over the course of years, they maintain their secretory capacity. So that means that in spite of having the beta cell antibodies, the destruction of beta cell is much, much slower as compared to the classical cases of type 1 diabetes. Now, how to screen and diagnose these cases? Uh, now, this uh, the problem is when how to uh, compare and contrast LADA with type 1 and type 2. These are some suggested characteristics. So now, age of onset, most cases of type 1, they start their disease in childhood or adolescent. Uh, GAD, uh, the LADA patients usually are in between 30 and 50 years. And type 2 patients, they are in adulthood. Now we have some cases with uh, younger onset, but classically they are above 40, 50 years. Symptoms of uh, acute hyperglycemia, they are very, very frequent. That is ketoacidosis or uh, severe uh, osmotic symptoms in type 1 diabetes at the time of onset. But the LADA presents with a subacute type of onset and the type 2 diabetes has an insidious type of onset. Insulin requirement right at the time of diagnosis in type 1, it takes at least six months before uh, the patients will require insulin in LADA. And most cases of type 2 diabetes will require insulin years after, sometimes six to 10 years after the diagnosis. Insulin resistance, uh, type 1 diabetes, there's hardly any insulin resistance. LADA, there is some degree of insulin resistance, but type 2, they are characterized by high insulin resistance. BMI, type 1, they are usually very low, less than 18 uh, BMI, but most cases will be less than 25. LADA, they are less than 25, but uh, rarely they may have more than 25. And most cases of type 2 are obesity related and uh, the, the BMI is more. Now, coming to atherosclerotic long-term complications, type 1 are less predisposed. LADA are also pre less predisposed, but type 2 diabetic patients, they are more predisposed. And same is true for the uh, many risk factors of metabolic syndrome. Now, biochemical features, islet cell antibodies have very high titer in type 1 diabetes. Titers may be 
uh, varying from uh, low to high, but they are usually, they are almost always present, but they are absent in type 2 diabetes. And if you see stimulated uh, C-peptide levels, uh, it's almost undetectable or very low in type 1 diabetes, but uh, they can be much better present in LADA. And uh, usually at the time of diagnosis, most patients are hyperinsulinemic and so C-peptide may be very high also, or maybe normal in type 2 diabetes at the time of diagnosis. HLA association is high in type 1 diabetes, is moderate in LADA, may be present, may not be present, and then type 2 diabetes is usually absent. Family history is negative most of the times in type 1 diabetes, also negative in type uh, in LADA type of diabetes, but it's uh, usually present, almost 70% cases may have positive family history. Family history of uh, autoimmune diseases, again, they are usually seen, may be seen in type 1 and LADA, but they may not be present in the patients suffering from type 2 diabetes. Now, in one of the publications, they have said that there are five clinical risk factors, and accordingly, you can make the uh, possibility whether the patient is likely to suffer from LADA or not. Right at the time of onset, if the onset is below 50 years of age and BMI is less than 25, this is second criteria. Third is acute uh, uh, symptoms of hyperglycemia, whether they are present or not, history of autoimmune disease present in the patient or not, or family history of autoimmune disease present or not. So if these, out of these five risk factors, if two or more are present, the chances are that your patient may be suffering from LADA and then you should directly can go to the GAD antibody if they are positive, you can make a diagnosis of LADA. And then you can measure C-peptide. If it's high, you can start with the insulin right in the beginning. Uh, if, if it is low, it, you can start insulin in the beginning. But if it is high, you can also give some alternative to insulin. If it is negative, it's type 2. If the only one risk factor is present, then there is a mild risk of LADA. In those cases, instead of going for very costly a guide antibody test, you can go for a stimulated C-peptide test. If it is normal, you can consider type 2 diabetes. If it is low, you can measure GAD antibodies. And if it is positive, you can make a diagnosis of LADA. But if there is no risk factor among these five, then chances are that your patient is not suffering from LADA. It is a case of type 2 diabetes. And so you can treat him accordingly. Now coming to treatment, uh, there are many studies suggesting uh, 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 the treatment of LADA. Now, if you can see a few of them. So here is a study in which uh, rosiglitazone and insulin was compared to insulin alone. Measures of uh, beta cell functions were higher in rosiglitazone plus insulin groups, suggesting that uh, rosiglitazone has some uh, beneficial effect. Then coming to a randomized uh, control trial on insulin versus sulfonylurea and a uh, good number of uh, 60 patients uh, with GAD positivity were seen here. Now progression uh, rate to insulin dependent state was lower in insulin group as compared to sulfonylurea group after a mean follow-up of 57 months. Now, same is true for cetagliptin and linagliptin. So what is what it conveys is that sulfonylurea probably brings in uh, insulin dependency earlier. So beta cell loss may be faster in patients who are given sulfonylurea when they are suffering from LADA. Now coming to cetagliptin, linagliptin, and sexagliptin, most such studies suggest that after 12 months, uh, the measures of beta cell functions were stable in cetagliptin plus insulin grip, uh, uh, but significantly decreased in insulin group, uh, insulin alone group. Same was seen in linagliptin, and same was seen in sexagliptin. Sexagliptin increased beta cell function from baseline in both GAD positive and GAD negative. So that means that uh, giving uh, uh, incretin based therapy may probably prevent the, the apoptosis of beta cells and regeneration of beta cells. Now, there's another study in which dulaglutide was used in a good number of patients suffering from LADA and uh, type 2 diabetes after 12 months. Dulaglutide decreased HbA1c and increased beta cell function in GAD positive patients. So, so in conclusion, we can say that uh, for treating LADA, LADA subjects, subjects have residual beta cell function and treatment should aim at protecting the beta cells and stimulating beta cell regeneration. Faster progression of insulin dependency is seen with sulfonylurea, so we should better avoid sulfonylurea uh, in these patients. 
data from RCT show that early initiation of insulin therapy in LADA patients improve the metabolic control and protect the beta cell function. And DPP-4 inhibitors and GLP-1 receptor agonists have shown to attenuate the decline of uh, C-peptide levels in LADA patients. And insulin sensitizers, though there are not much reports, the insulin sensitizer seems to be beneficial as insulin resistance is seen in LADA patients. So in summary, I'll say that LADA is a form of diabetes occurring in adults with slowly progressive beta cell loss due to autoimmunity. Nearly 5 to 10% patients initially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes may be having LADA. Absence of features of metabolic syndrome make them phenotypically closer to type 1 diabetes. Uh, diagnostic confirmation uh, of LADA needs uh, uh, tests for beta cell antibodies, GADA being most sensitive, but it is not practical due to cost involved. We know that uh, uh, whatever, whatever uh, the, the corporate labs I found out that it requires some 14,000 to 16,000 as a cost in rupees. C-peptide test after a mixed meal is a cost-effective test to screen patients who need confirmatory testing for islet cell antibodies. So you can bank upon the C-peptide uh, test, particularly after a mixed meal stimulus. And uh, as we know that at the onset, most patients of type 2 diabetes may be having uh, some compensatory hyperinsulinemia. So their C-peptide levels will be high, while in LADA patients, they will be markedly reduced, but they are definitely more than type 1 patients. Sulfonylurea are poor choice for LADA as they result in beta cell failure and faster progression to insulin. Insulin, DPP-4 in inhibitor, thiazolindindions, and GLP-1 receptor agonists have shown promise in achieving glycemic control and preserving the beta cell function. So thank you very much. Uh, I, I hope I'm finished in time. And uh, if there are any questions, I'll be very pleased to answer.